Good morning and welcome to Farm Factor. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom. Today, Dwayne Taves talks with John Geno with Neogen about genomics. He talks about important traits that cow-calf operators can get through crossbreeding. Next up, Greg Akagi brings us the Kansas soybean update. Then Dwayne Taves talks to Chad Ellis with Noble Research Institute. Learn the history behind the Institute and what agricultural services they offer. Find out what's going on around the state with the Kansas Farm Bureau update. And to wrap up, it's Plain Talk with Kyle and Dwayne. It's all coming up on Farm Factor. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. Watch Ag AM in Kansas online at agamincansas.com. Welcome to the Western Kansas Wildlife Travel Center right here in my hometown of Oakley, Kansas. We're the front door of Western Kansas, located on three main highways, I-70, US-83, and US-40. And all those roads lead to history, beautiful scenery, and adventure, no matter which direction you go. We now have an IHOP. That brand that you've trusted up and down the road in all your travels is staffed with local folks, real people, just like you and me, and we're waiting on you to join us. So for fun, adventure, fuel up, fuel your body, and let's have some fun. These days, no one can afford to take the risk of being without financial protection against high health care costs, not even for a few days. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans offer short-term health care coverage to fill in those temporary gaps. Short-term health plans can provide you with medical coverage when you are between health plans, helping lower your potential financial risk. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. This segment brought to you by Kansas Wheat. Learn more at rediscoverwheat.org. Welcome back to Farm Factor. Dwayne is with John Geno of Neogen. He explains the importance of crossbreeding in the cow-calf industry. Dwayne Tames joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas. An opportunity to catch up with John Geno with uh, genomics and uh, talking about genomics with Neogen. And to, before we get to there, John, let's talk a little bit about uh, crossbreeding. Certainly, it, it's been around since the beginning of animal husbandry, but uh, in some parts of the country, we've kind of lost some of that philosophy on, on the heterosis side. Talk a little bit about uh, what the advantages are from, uh, from a heterosis standpoint from your perspective. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. You know, we've known about the benefits of crossbreeding for, for quite a while, but we've actually seen uh, crossbreeding decrease recent past and I, I think a lot of that is our focus on terminal type of traits which are more impacted by selection and um, you know and and certain breeds perform better than others for terminal terminal type of traits um, the real benefit of heterosis is not in terminal traits it's not in carcass it's not in feedlot performance um, so much as as maternal traits it's how long does a cow stay in the herd um, what's the probability she's going to breed it's probability you're going to have deaths and treatment issues and all of those types of things. So it's it's longevity, it's fertility, it's health, and and ultimately those are the traits that are the most important for economically for for commercial cow calf operators. Um, so I, I really I really think that crossbreeding makes the most sense for for cow calf operators, and that's whether it's a big operator or a small operator, it doesn't matter. Um, heterosis is is uh, incredibly important for those those producers. Certainly, I think we've seen some things anecdotally uh, just on the on the vigor and doability. I guess I'll call it. Uh, we've started to see more guys losing calves once we've already turned out on grass and, and pastures during the summertime, uh, and it makes you wonder if it isn't some of that vigor that we've we've lost because of a, a monoculture type genetic program. Yeah, I think I think that's it's likely that it is. I think foot you know foot issues, bag issues. Um, all of those things, I think, come back to, to um, you know, some of the old animal breeding principles of just having more genetic variation in the animals that we have in a, what's often a harsh environment. 
Talk a little bit about a uh, new program uh, that you've got, a new test that, uh, that Neogen's using that, uh, that really is, is custom fit uh, for a commercial producer. Yeah, so we have a new, new test we've released. It's um, Invigor. Uh, you'll you'll see it as Igenity plus Invigor. Um, the idea is that is that this is a genomic indicator of heterosis. Um, so it wouldn't be a test that's, that applies to a purebred breeder. It would be for somebody developing commercial heifers. Um, it's a um, simple add-on test for somebody who's already doing Igenity testing, or it can be bought as a standalone product. Um, uh, but the idea is that this gives a, a producer a one through ten score. Um, for heterosis um, and with a 10 uh, being the best and, and one being the having the least amount of, of heterosis. Um, it doesn't apply to specific traits like our other our other uh, scores would. So we have a marbling score that's a 1 through 10 for marbling. This would be a, a 1 through 10 for heterosis um, that, that would actually be delivered to a, uh, somebody who bought the test. So we talk about why that's important. Uh, you'd reference some numbers on a percentage basis on basically stability of a cow in the herd. Yeah, so what we found when we went out and looked at stability was uh, in a true commercial setting that a one uh, point increase was about four and a half percentage points increase in stability. That means if an animal goes from a, from a um, four to a five, that their uh, probability that they'll be in the herd at five years old um, still as a productive cow, goes up by four and a half percentage points. It goes from 50% to 54 and a half percent, let's say. And, and to me, that's huge. I mean, there aren't, we don't have EPDs that have that big of an impact on stability. So this is a big, uh, I, I think it's a very, very important and a huge number that, you know, that this, this test is able to deliver. Uh, our thanks to John Jenho joining us here, uh, talking about uh, genomics and how they can be utilized uh, on a commercial basis uh, to improve longevity and stability in a cow herd. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Coming up after the break, it's this week's Kansas Soybean Update. Stay with us. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. I'm Bob Swartz, and I've devoted the last 43 years to helping Kansans reach their retirement goals and to protect the family farm. At Bob Swartz Financial, we believe everyone should be able to live the retirement they've always dreamed of. Our team of professionals can help you create an efficient strategy using a variety of investment vehicles to help you address your financial needs and your concerns. Bob Swartz Financial values, commitment, and transparency. KFRM is one of the largest farm radio stations in the nation, dedicated to informing and entertaining rural listeners from northern Oklahoma to southwestern Nebraska. You can catch KFRM in many ways, of course, 550 on the AM dial, streaming at KFRM.com, or on your smartphone by going to the TuneIn Radio app, or on Ag AM in Kansas on Tuesdays, and Facebook every day of the week. KFRM, tune us in. You'll be glad you did. This segment brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Soybean Update. This is the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Nathan Holes is joining us. He is a graduate of Wamigo High School, but he also received the State FFA Oil Crop Proficiency Award that's sponsored by Kansas Soybeans. And let's talk about your supervised agricultural experience program uh, to which you received the award. What did your program entail? When I started back in 2017, I had a labor agreement with my parents with my uh, cleaning up a plot of one acre. And then the following year, I asked my neighbor to the west, seeing that how well I cleaned up 
our spot needs to spread maybe for two acres on a labor agreement also to clean up around this. So year after that, 97 acres came up for sale. Dryland, and I applied for a beginning farmer's run through the USDA, and they said they could sponsor half of the loan. I need to find another lender. I went with Farm Credit, and that year, planted soybeans on the hill ground, and also rented 25% of an irrigated 80 acre tract for my parents. So what were some of your roles and responsibilities and management decisions in this case in relating to the award? Going out and checking for weeds and pest control out. And on one of our farms where on the 80-acre track, uh, out there in Scatter, since it was wet last year, water had backed in to the ditch and came over onto the field and had a little bit sudden death syndrome there and we had to respray that checking for making sure the growth of the plant is healthy with all that happening how did that crop do last year on both they went 53.2 bushels per acre but separating them out my hill ground went 54 bushels per acre and the 80 acre track irrigated track went 53 that is Nathan Holes, a graduate of Wamigo High School and the recipient of the State FFA Proficiency Award in Fiber and Oil Crop Production. He joins us on the Kansas Soybean Update. It's brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Learn more at kansassoybeans.org. For Kansas Soybeans, I'm Greg Akagi. After the break, Duane visits with Chad Ellis. Learn what the Noble Research Institute is and what services it offers to farmers and ranchers. Sure Crop Fertilizers was started by my father, Don Sherman, and my mother, Shirley Sherman. Family business has started in the 80s. We predominantly focus on plant nutrients and what we can do to give growers better responses for with the fertilizer dollars that they do and what we can do to you know, make those things work better for the grower. We're based out of Seneca, Kansas, we work with growers in their soil analysis to figure out what they need and then we can put those in a blend that gives them the best results and so that we can deliver that direct to their farm so that they have those nutrients where they need them, when they need them, and so that they can apply them in a manner that's, that's very efficient to them and, and works well on their planting systems and what they're doing. Sure Crop Fertilizers has been around for a long time. We always say we're, we're big enough to take care of everything you need, but we're small enough to do it quickly. You can get a hold of us at 1-800-635-4743. Um, our website is surecropfertilizers.com. And you can always email me at corey at surecropfertilizers.com. And with any questions you have, we'd be glad to answer and work with you. This segment brought to you by SureCrop. Liquid crop nutrition delivered right to your farm. We're back. Now let's join Dwayne Taves as he visits with Chad Ellis from the Noble Research Institute. Dwayne Taves joining you once again here on Ag AM in Kansas and a chance to catch up with Chad Ellis with the Noble Research Institute. Chad, i got to be honest, I, I wanted to say foundation. That, I guess, is what it used to be, but now it's gone beyond. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. I mean, we're, we're actually celebrating our, starting our 75th year, and, uh, which is an exciting time for us. Uh, we moved uh, over a, a couple of years ago to the Noble Research Institute, um, kind of, uh, we're all still the same. It's, it's a different name, different brand, but uh, still providing solutions for producers today. And um, so we still have the foundation side, which is our philanthropic arm. And then our research institute is really about that uh, producer solutions and uh, looking at from the basic research to applied research to our consultation service and really focused uh, around key, three key things. That's land stewardship, uh, grazing uh, production, as well as producer profitability. When thinking about uh, the opportunity to have something like that within the state of Oklahoma, uh, there is a land grant university there is too that uh, is doing ongoing research but because of the uh, additional emphasis that uh, the noble family had 
uh, you're getting a more bang for your buck in yeah. a sense. Uh, that's exactly right. I mean, one of the things is our founder, Lloyd Noble, he, he founded our uh, our in, our in institution not to, I mean, we understand that collaboration is important. We have to, we can't do it alone. We have to do it all together. And his aspect is he wanted to put his fortune in that aspect to help, you know, uh, amplify the the ag the extension service as well as nrcs natural resource conservation service from the federal government we're thinking about uh, the opportunities to do that and uh, and i'm sure you guys end up on a lot of the same panels uh, and when we're discussing a specific issue or topic but uh, you do have a, a tremendous staff that's employed that do a tremendous amount of varied research we do uh, we're about 375 employees you know, all the way from uh, our, our folks that are running our ranches. We have seven different farms and ranches ourselves. So we have our own, you know, we have skin in the game on, the, on that end from a pr production side. Uh, we Then we have our basic science guys looking at the D DNA genome, look, really looking at the, the soil uh, to root interactions and those things that, you know, it all starts right there underneath our feet at the soil. And that's our foundation to any cattle operation in the country. Thinking about, uh, really, it is kind of a, a living legacy that uh, that they've put in place, uh, but continues to grow as well. It is. I mean, we're it's a really exciting times, and and uh, you know we're we're trying to always find. I mean, right now we're kind of uh, new leadership. Uh, Steve Ryan's our CEO. He's really you know pushing and, and the board of us being a national presence, and so we're looking at how can we help producers not only in our local community that we have for 75 plus years, but how do we start expanding and helping others and, and leverage all this research and knowledge uh, around the country. Well, certainly it is uh, based right there in uh, in Oklahoma, but uh, you reference that national presence. I know a lot of your researchers end up on speaking programs around the country. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, it's exciting. I mean, I mean, not only our researchers, but our, our, consul our consultants. You know, that's one thing that we're pretty unique and, and one thing that puts us a little bit different maybe than Extension or the Natural Resource Conservation Service is that we take a multidiscipline approach. So we have livestock consultants, we have soil uh, and crop consultants, range and pasture consultants, wildlife consultants and in uh, kind of the glue to it all we have economists so we can really help kind of shape all of those and meet those goals and objectives of those landowners we're well, thinking about that multifaceted approach uh, ultimately it is the the bottom line and all of those play a part it, most definitely I mean if you're not profitable you're not going to stay in business and we know that I mean when we talk when we talk about sustainability I mean that's the that's the key key leg um, to that to that operation is being being able to be sustainable and be able to hand it off to the next generation that's important if people are interested in learning more uh, i suspect there's a website that they can go to that is it noble.org it's easy and uh, please come see we got a lot of information a lot of science um, as well as just other good information to help you to be better tomorrow than you are today our thanks to Chad Ellis with the Noble Research Institute joining us on Ag AM in Kansas. Jamie, we'll send it back to you. Thanks, Dwayne. Come back after the break for the Kansas Farm Bureau update. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or for more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back to Farm Factor and the Kansas Farm Bureau update. And we want to take this opportunity to announce the endorsement of Dr. Roger Marshall for our U.S. Senate seat. But before we do that, I want to take just a moment, though, and, and talk about our Farm Bureau process as how we arrive at this endorsement. And we have a great process in Kansas Farm Bureau that uh, we rely on our grassroots roots, just like we do our regular policy. 
Uh, in this case, we have given all of our counties the opportunity to make recommendations to our state group. And then that state group, our state PAC group, our voters organized to elect Farm Bureau friends, then takes under advisements those recommendations from the counties and then arrives at a recommendation into an endorsement. Our process was completed this morning or today and we are proud to make that endorsement for Rod, Dr. Roger Marshall. And it was easy for us to come to that decision uh, through to his prior history and what he's been able to do for us as he's represented us for two terms here in Washington, D.C. Rich, thank you so much. I'm, I just couldn't be more honored uh, by your endorsement. I know that with your endorsement comes your reputation. And to all the Kansas Farm Bureau members who did this, who, who made this possible, uh, for, on behalf of all my family, thanks. Uh, growing up in agriculture, uh, you know, your reputation means everything to you. And all I can say is I'm not going to let you down. We're not going to be outworked. I'm going to make sure that Kansas has a voice also on the, Kansas, you know, on the Senate Agriculture Committee as well. I'm just so honored to be here. And by the way, I'm practicing social isolation right now. I'm in Kismet, Kansas, and I wanted to make sure they had a good internet connection. So I uh, stopped here to do this announcement, kind of running from liberal to dodge, uh, trying to work on some of the COVID crisis. And I, I just want to just lift you all up today and just spread a message of hope that we can get this, do this together. I've got confidence in us. I know it's been tough times, but those pioneers before us, uh, my, my farms and my, my family, both of them 100 years old or more, we can get through this as well. So God bless all of you. Rich, I'm honored to, to serve with you and I can't wait to keep working with you on the Senate side. Thank you so much and, and, and just God bless everybody. Well, thank you, Dr. Marshall, for that. And again, it was easy for our group to come to that de decision. And, and as you and I have worked together and, and our Farm Bureau's worked together in our prior endorsements for you uh, when you were in your present uh, seat in, in the House. But in addition to that, you've done a tremendous job of reaching out to your constituents, our fellow people in agriculture and rural communities so we'll look forward to our continued relationship and working to get you elevated to the U.S. Senate seat. Thank you, Rich. We're going to do this together. God bless you all. Stay with us. We'll be back after the break with Plain Talk. No one plans to get sick or injured. But when life happens, it's important you and your family are protected. Kansas Farm Bureau Health Plans are there to provide continued health care coverage to meet your needs. Choose from a broad range of individual and family plans. And if you're over 65, we have options for you too. Learn more at kfbhealthplans.com or contact a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent near you. Kansas Corn reminds you that E15 fuel is the right choice for every kind of driver. For the car enthusiast, E15 has higher octane. For the thrifty driver, E15 is priced lower than regular unleaded. For the nature lover, E15 provides cleaner air. For the shopper who buys local, E15 has more ethanol from our Kansas corn farms. Choose E15 for a higher octane, lower price, cleaner American fuel. Message from the Kansas Corn Commission. Learn more at kscorn.com. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats and Overbrook. Let us help feed your family. Welcome back. Now let's see what Kyle and Dwayne are up to on Plain Talk. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer with Plain Talk. With the guy who always says doing things smart doesn't cost near as much as doing things stupid, Dwayne Taves. Boy, and I continue to live that ritual. <laughs> live that one every day. Oh, you know, it's, it's like, kind of like old John Wayne saying, life's hard, it's harder when you're stupid. Well, I say that to myself regularly. Oh, I make like, sure nobody thinks I'm talking to them when I'm saying it. What was I thinking? Exactly. I'll tell you what you were thinking. You weren't thinking, Dwayne. Yeah. That Just like what your dad always words said. Words from to my you. dad right there. <laughs> Only he never gave you a chance to like to, No, he to, never even put a comma in yeah, there. Yeah, no, there was no gap for me to answer, which is good because as a <laughs> teenage, you'd have probably teenage answered. boy, I'd have been dumb enough to say something inappropriate. <laughs> your fact or fiction question of the day, Kyle Bauer, the sound of thunder. 
okay. is literally coming from clouds running into each other. Oh. Fact or fiction? Fiction. Yeah. No. You what, know what it is? Um, it's charges, isn't it? Going between the two? It isn't. Hot air vibrating around a lightning bolt. Okay. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, you got that crack because basically the air is expanding so fast, fast. Yeah. that it breaks the sound barrier. It's hot. You Ooh. know, when I was a kid, might have been before your time, when I was a kid, we used to hear sonic booms somewhat regularly. From an airplane? Yeah. Oh. Do you ever remember a time in your life that way? Uh, once in a hayfield, <clears throat> thought I was going to die. So it was pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Well, well you live somewhat out. in the yeah, neighborhood of close Wichita. to McConnell Air Force Base. Right. Some of those guys, every now and then, would find it a bit humorous and would fill their day with joy to come up over the top of somebody in a field. But they didn't break a sonic boom. They were just buzzing you. Yeah. No, I think they boomed it. Oh, uh, well, I remember my worst one. See, we would, the guys at SAC Air Base in... Um, Omaha. In Omaha, would go down and make a bombing run. They were Air Force Reserve or Navy Reserve, whatever. They would work their day, then they'd jump in their jet, go down and make a strafing run on the bombing um, range at there at, at Salina, and be home in time for supper. Uh-huh. But there, they would come by pretty low every once in a while. One day, I am pulling up to the diesel tank with a tractor at an idle mm-hmm. with the door open, had a cab. With the door open, and that guy came from behind me at probably a hundred feet off the ground. Oh! And it was, and, and he, all he of a sudden, I mean, oh, and I was just all of a sudden, you know, it literally, I was pulling up to a fuel barrel with a tractor and an idle, and I thought something had literally blown up. Hmm. And then I saw him, <laughs> and then I got out my hammer and threw it at him. No, it's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll get ne- you, my pretty. <laughs> I, I think it took a more than an hour for my heart to start again. Oh, uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. I don't remember that many sonic booms, but it was not uncommon for them to buzz over the top of somebody in a field. Yeah, I thought they kind of outlawed them, if you will, um, because the sonic booms literally would shake the glass in your house. Uh, um, and that's any time a... Airplane gets over about, what, 680 miles an hour? Is that the speed of sound? Is that Mach 1? It is Mach 1. Okay. Yeah. And so, and I guess they try to do it not over populated areas because I know there's aircraft that will go over Mach 1. Right. But um, it's it's interesting how close jetliners fly to that. I mean, you're the guy that when we fly watches the little thing and they're usually there with all the details. And they're usually about. 620 miles an hour? Roughly. Yeah. I mean, it's... They're like, humming along. Yeah. Sure a lot faster than a two-lane road on a backcountry highway. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Jamie Bloom, and I hope you enjoyed today's show. See you next week on Farm Factor. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com.